to their boyfriends, talk to their moms, talk to their dads. My solution is just like alcohol and just like cigarettes, there should be an age limit on technology. I think that you, I think that there should be a law instated saying that minors should be such and such an age and should know when to say when on technology. And the reason behind my whole problem and solution is uh, I feel that there's just too much technology in the hands of individuals that aren't as socially responsibly smart to use it. Socially responsible, knowing when to say when. So you're saying that teenagers are not socially responsible? I did not say it. I didn't say there. I didn't say all of them, did I? You there's said. people. With, there's people standing behind me that are behind my point of view that are your, the same age as you. Why, why should the teacher be the only one expected to set a good example for everyone? Shouldn't we as people set a good example for all other members of society? Because if we let only one person do the job and we don't try to make the change and do it ourselves, then why the hell are we even like... Like bigger consequences to better ourselves. Well, um, we wouldn't need consequences if people themselves would make the decisions. That's all on the individual. Yeah. And I mean, I accept that even though like what's right and wrong is subjective. Derek. What is this? <laughs> okay. If you take out your cell phone right now and look at how many text messages, look how many like, all the times and tell me if they're in class and how many times have you responded. And I mean, I have like three texts on my physics test. Of course I'm not going to check because I don't want to get my phone taken away. And I mean, I understand that everyone can make the right decisions to text or not text or whatever in class, but how many people at the school do you think are really responsible and will do that? Because all you guys are saying, oh well, you know, maybe if there's an emergency, maybe we'll block. Those are all maybes and we already know that that could be an exception, but you guys are all ignoring that not everyone will do that. So how do you, how do you stop that? So do we keep it and let everyone like have it up to themselves to text or not text, or do we just stop it? Mr. Quintez, didn't you answer your phone this week when your brother called you in the middle of class? Very true. Where does his brother live? Does he live in a house? What is it that much important that he has to stop? Well, your cousin knows who your brother It doesn't matter. He has the cousin in class. Work. So I believe Mr. Quintez should have right. better at school. And, and I was socially responsible in saying that, knowing that telling you the story behind my cousin, saying that he's, education. He, he's living in the jungle, and how did many... Did I learn something from him living in the jungle? You did not, and that downtime, correct? And the choices that I made, correct? Right? <laughs> but being socially responsible, I chose to do something that might not have been the most popular choice, but as far as text messaging, uh, just cause, hey, what are you doing? Uh, I'm bored. Uh, hey, what are you going to do after school? As opposed to uh, someone coming out of an area, uh, a remote area for the past five months. That's a little different, would not you say? Different? You should be consistent and make everybody not have cell phones at school because not being consistent. I said no. I'm saying like if Everyone? if everybody everybody if like it's not fair to have some people have it. You should just not have. You should not let have people have cell phones at school at all. Not even teachers. Not even staff. It should just be everybody put it away. You can't single you can't like single out a certain group just because. So everyone put it away. Yeah, but the teachers also should get like put away their cell phones too. You should be consistent with what you're saying. Um, however, uh, if you draw the line saying students are the ones who cannot have it, it is uh, directly addressing the problem. The problem is not okay. Uh, yeah, the problem is not uh, the teachers with their cell phones. The problem is students texting in class. In several of my classes. I, I can just look around and just see several people texting. Students cheating, students sending answers to other students, students telling other students what's going to be on the next exam. 
Yeah, things like that. I, I cannot say for sure what exactly they're texting because I don't like, look over them. But um, the thing is that they're texting during class and usually during lecture time or during the test. It's really not productive for the class. But you can't say that texting is the only thing that um, that distracts people because those people sleep. I see you in calculus talking all the time, so you can't. Well, I, I, I think you better bring up a larger, a larger perspective, and that's of respect. And in any type of relationship, peers, teacher, student, teacher, teacher, there needs to be respect. And sometimes being respectful is is you know, in doing what you're supposed to do at the time, which is you know, focusing your attention on on the, the goal of education. You know, we'd like it to be that, so that everybody can self-monitor, but you know, even even teachers can't self-monitor themselves. I mean, you know, we have to uh, abide by certain rules and regulations, and you know, nobody's perfect. People will make mistakes, but you know, I think the, whole, the overarching the overarching goal should be that we're respectful to each other. And if we if we stay in the base root of being respectful, I think that would solve a lot of problems. Can you tell what the optimal library is that you would be towards the shots? I agree with you in, in part, Andrew. I see what you're getting at. That, uh, that there might be there might be certain times in a classroom where there's a you know, quote unquote downtime where it, where it might seem like you can answer a text message. But um, unless the the larger group of the student body is able to is able to show that they can self moderate themselves and realize when those times are, then we uh, then the, the, the solution I think is to have is to not have it happen at all in the classroom because it, it more often than not it happens when uh, there is something of value going on. Downtime or no downtime? I know adults and teachers objective is to have kids learn, but at the same time you can never really control what people do, you can only provide regulation, and it's really the individual that matters. So, so would you say it would be okay for me to smoke in a classroom? Well, technically it wouldn't be ideal for you to smoke in a classroom, but it's not like it would stop you, they can take you to step outside. And I mean, a classroom is not really the place for that. No one's going to really. So, text messaging is the place for. It's not the a classroom space. is the place for text messaging. No, it's not the place for okay, texting. So. It's the place for learning. But, like, I realize that. Yeah, it's. No, I'm actually. Kind of... I'm away and you can buy a cell phone. What would that age would be? I would say about 18. I disagree. Why is that? Well, if we have an emergency, then you could use the cell phone, or excuse me, you could use the phone that we have in all of our rooms here on campus. Well, if there's like a blackout, like then none of your phones have this there's a, work. There's a blackout? You can use my cell phone if you'd like. But what if it's like a long line and I have to make a quick call? Mm -hmm. Can you have a I'm not in What about your minutes? How, I mean, do you have unlimited minutes? Why, why should I be in the network? Do you, do, would you not agree with me though that technology is becoming a hindrance more than a help to your life? No? Not at all. You don't find yourself text messaging your friends while you sit in Mr. Wood's class? Never. Never done in my life. Never in your life. <laughs> do you, so you, you feel that when you're being distracted by the cell phone, that something else that is going on around you, you're missing out? Do you feel you're missing out while you're text messaging? Not all students have text and internet, so not all students are texting their friends during class. Oh. So that's social responsibility, correct? I tend to text my mom during class. Uh, but shouldn't your, shouldn't your mom be socially responsible and know that you are in class at this time? Sometimes emergencies pop up and you can't control them. They're emergencies. If they're 
big emergencies, they would come and pick you up from school, correct? Negative. That's a negative? Yeah. What if there is Not all the time. Oh, I see. So, as Marcos was saying, it's socially, he's being socially responsible. Just like, I mean, you don't see me coming to school drunk or coming to school uh, smoking in my classroom. That would be social responsibility, correct? Uh, I propose a solution to the cell phone problem of making a harsher penalty underneath California education codes of what schools and communities are able to do with cell phones, making the cell phone penalty a little harsher. Because I think that the school has tried out the situation of giving you a lot of leeway, and it isn't a lot of people just a few people, but it, uh, you know, the, the primary concern in classroom is optimum learning, learning environment. And if people are misusing and abusing the, the right to having a cell phone with them, then I think that the, the situation needs to be a little, a little different to send the message that you know, what we're here for, what we're doing is is to make the brain develop in a way that uh, you can realize your, your optimal uh, potential. And that's not able to be done with uh, the constant barrage of interruptions that, uh, that we have.